दोस्तों गुड मॉर्निंग इट्स अ वनफुल वेदर आई थिंक आई शुड टॉक टू यू अबाउट द हॉटेस्ट न्यूज दैट इज गोइंग ऑन दिस डेज एंड द हॉटेस्ट न्यूज इज गोइंग अराउंड इज द विक्ट्री ऑफ डोनाल्ड ट्रंप नाउ इफ यू रिमेंबर दर वॉज अ प्ले बाय विलियम शेक्सपियर इन विच मार्क एंटनी मेक्स अ स्पीच एट द फ्यूनरल ऑफ यूरियस सीजर एंड ही सेज आई कम टू बड़ी सीजर not to praise him well i'll say the same thing about donald trump i'm not here to praise him but bring out the stark realities of what's going to happen because the fact is that donald trump has got very little time at his disposal just four years because as per the amendment to the american constitution passed during the time when uh, president truman was president the presidency has been restricted to 8 years that is two terms and donald has already done one term when he lost up to that to joe biden and now he gets just one more term that's the point and that one term is also pretty short by global standards that's four years in france it is seven years and in india it is five years and you can get a renewal and of course as far as china and russia are concerned it's perpetual so you can't compare with them so that when the situation is here as it is that donald trump was a dark horse and the lead forces in america they didn't want him to come to power that's a fact there were three assassination attempts on his life i would say he was something like the cat with nine lives so he had another six lives to go uh, but somebody was involved deep inside but he survived and now the election has taken place and he has won now the deep state was really very frightened of donald trump coming to power the reason was that he is a revolutionary man and he is a man who goes by his instinct and by his own ideas he doesn't believe in the beaten track now the american track which is basically articulated by the democrats is to have continuous and perpetual wars which fuels the american war industry and in turn lots of millions and millions of dollars come into the industry which is populated to the people and they have a semblance of prosperity this was the economic module which was being followed by the democrats and that is the reason they had the wars coming up in afghanistan and then also in uh, ukraine while of course the war in uh, gaza is a different aspect of the whole case we will we'll discuss it later so trump wanted to put a stop to these wars you know ceaseless wars and when he was the president in the last four years he didn't start a single war in fact he was the one man who really was keen on disengagement in afghanistan which he did it's another matter that uh, he was defeated after that and uh, Joe Biden bungled up the entire uh, retreat from Afghanistan. As it stands now, gentlemen, the deep state is again very worried because Donald Trump has got certain ideas. I'll tell you what they are. Firstly, I think he wishes to have more money coming into the, the American taxpayers' pockets, and he's got some reasons, some things to talk about. He's talking about abolishing income tax, or at least cutting it down to the minimum. in any case the big corporates are going to get a lot of uh, leeway in reduction of taxes that is income tax and then he said we will fill up the coffers because after all the government needs money it's got to pay for the pensions it's got to pay for the salaries and the upkeep of the monuments and so many things it's the federal government which is run a big country like america so from where do you going to get the money so they're going to have extra taxes coming in on basically on the goods which are being supplied to america and those goods which are made in america also so you going to recover the money which you're going to lose in the income tax by putting more taxes and the countries which are going to suffer most are going to be countries like china or japan 
and some of the Southeast Asian countries which have been supplying a lot of items to America and to a certain extent even India. So this is not a happy proposition as far as India is concerned because the Indian goods will become uncompetitive, they won't be able to compete and India will lose much of the American market. There is a distinct possibility of that. Another thing which Donald Trump is going to do is bring about peace in the Ukraine. Now this is a matter of great uh, turmoil, you know, to the West European powers because peace in Ukraine would only be at the Russian terms, there is no doubt about it. And Donald Trump has already made it clear that he is a great admirer of Putin, but at the same time he wants the war to stop. I'll give you an idea how the war is going on. Americans have sp spent billions of dollars in Ukraine and this is the American taxpayers' money which should have been used for the benefit of the Americans' people. But Biden and company were pushing it into the pockets of Zelensky, which in turn went something into his pocket and part of it came back to America as payment for the weapons which America is going to supply to Ukraine and the American industry flourished, that is the war industry. So this was one of the methods, you know, which he wanted to stop. And Zelensky is obviously worried because his monthly cut, you know, which he was going to get uh, from uh, the Americans was going to stop. He stalled to be money, you know, in the Libra Islands, Windward Islands, Bahamas, London, and he's pretty economically secure, but that security is not going to last long and he may very well have to say, Bye bye, or maybe have to leave Ukraine. So let us see how Donald Trump brings about peace in Ukraine. It's not going to be easy. And secondly, I think he's going to have an opening back to North Korea. That's very important. If you remember, he had two meetings with the Korean leader, uh, Kim Jong, last time, the last one in Singapore. And during the time he was the president, Kim didn't have a single nuclear test or a missile launch. And now, one must just wonder that Kim may be the Ho Chi Minh in uh, North Korea. As you know, Ho Chi Minh was the leader of the Vietnamese and he was opposed to the communist Chinese. And after the war was over, he broke away from China and Vietnam had a war with China also. So he could wean away Kim from the Chinese orbit just as he will wean away Russia from the Chinese coupling. Because Russia is basically European power and there is no question they are going to chat with the Chinese, you know. The other smaller countries of Europe are going to get worried because like Belgium and Holland and all that because uh, Ukraine going away means that the Russian influence is going to increase and they feel the commitment to NATO of Donald Trump is suspect, which is very correct because he once made a statement that NATO is an obsolete organization. Now, how far he'll be able to do these things, we'll have to wait and see. And two other places I think he's going to be very severe on is one is in Bangladesh and the other is Pakistan. Uh, Bangladesh, you know, the present uh, Prime Minister Muhammad Yunus had been making a lot of noise against Trump at one time and this is just his just deserts which he's going to get and he must be mighty scared but he's gone also made a statement Donald Trump that the minorities the Christians and the Hindus he's going to save them in Bangladesh and that won't be to the liking of Muhammad Yunus and he I think that uh, the saying goes that the reverse count has begun. Sheikh Hasina had good relations with Donald Trump and I think she would be coming back to power with the help of Narendra Modi and Donald Trump and Yunus will have a tough time. Let's see how it works out. Pakistan also being close with China is a matter of great regret to the Americans. But then water finds its own level. You know what it means? It means that the water flows, but then it comes to a static level. And this was happening in Pakistan. Two Chinese managers 
had an argument with their security guard who pulled out a bullet, his gun and shot them. These men are critical. It just shows the hatred which the Pakistanis have for the Chinese. And these two Chinese are now struggling for their life, you know. And the reason why they, the security guard fired on the Chinese is that he was saying that Allah is supreme, while the Chinese said Mao Zedong or something is supreme and please do some work and don't forget about all this. In this argument, he pulled out his gun and shot the Chinese. So China should be very careful what's going to happen and Pakistan will be wondering now what are we going to go home. Because Donald Trump has made it very clear that he is not going to tolerate anything which is anti-America. So this is the line of thought that's going to be. Donald Trump's got four years to complete it and let us see if he can make America great. In the meanwhile, talk on a personal level, I think uh, I like it that Donald Trump has won. And also, Narendra Modi would be pretty pleased, you know, that uh, Donald Trump has come back to power. He had a good relation with him earlier, but he's in the habit of mocking Modi also. I remember once he, he copied or rather aped Modi the way he talks. So Modi won't be liking these things, you know. But then uh, that's part of the game. You've got to get along with it. Uh, last time we had the Howdy Modi uh, carnival in America and Modi had looked after him very well when he came to India and I wouldn't be surprised if at some stage uh, Donald Trump comes and attends the Republic Day Parade. Maybe this one or the next one. But gentlemen, the situation is pretty grim as far as I can look at it. As far as the world situation is concerned, the European powers are going to be terribly worried because Trump may do anything and Another person who would be worried are the Islamic world. I think they wouldn't be too happy with Donald Trump coming up. But one thing is very clear, Donald Trump is very close to Saudi Arabia and the UAE. And he's got a lot of investments there. His Trump uh, holdings are building lots of uh, golf houses and all that in the UAE. And the UAE is a staunch ally of the Americans. And I think the ruptured relationship between Saudi Arabia and uh, Donald Trump will also ease off. I don't know how he's going to solve the Gaza conflict. I think the conflict has solved itself because Hamas is decimated and uh, the country who will be really worried is Iran because Donald Trump is hell-bent on seeing that Iran doesn't become a nuclear power. So we'll have to see, gentlemen, very interesting things. And uh, domestically, John, Donald Trump can do anything. I don't know, you see, because if you go to the speeches of Kamala Harris, she had been stating that uh, Donald Trump is going to bring a change in the Constitution. Now, it's not easy. I mean, it's easy to talk about. That's what I said when I made that reference to the speech of Mark Antony. It's not going to be easy to bring about any change in America because the American deep state is so well entrenched and Donald Trump will be good enough to complete his tenure and go away and see what he can do. We'll wait and see how what he can achieve. In the meanwhile, I think he can bask in the sunlight because he's created history by coming back to, to say. And that's why I made the reference to the speech of Mark Antony, you know, on the funeral of Julius Caesar. And I'll also remind uh, that famous poem by Robert Frost, you know, which he said, the woods are lonely, dark and deep, and I have miles to go before I sleep. I think that's applicable to Donald Trump. He's got to be very careful. And one positive thing which I think is going to come around is that Donald Trump could think of an axis, you know, between America, the UAE and India. There's a possibility. But he wouldn't like India to go into the Chinese orbit. We'll have to wait and see, gentlemen, how things work out. I think I'll close now and say goodbye and God bless. I hope you like my video. Uh, if you like it, please share it with your friends and come back for more. It's very interesting uh, to talk to you all. And I will say goodbye and Jai Hind. Take care.